Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we're looking at a pen uh, and ink combination, uh, sort of a mini review of each of them. The ink being Robert Oster Toffee uh, and the pen being the newly released Twisby Go. So this isn't necessarily a, re a, a full review of both, it's just some initial thoughts and ideas, uh, particularly about the, the Twisby pen, which uh, both his thoughts on my take on the pen uh, in these last couple of days, it was only released last week, uh, and also just a couple of reflections on other people's thoughts uh, on the pen as well. So let's get started. So this is the Twisby Go. This is the packaging it comes in. It's a pretty uh, iconic sort of packaging for Twisby with the, the brown cardboard sleeve, uh, but new to this pen. So you take the sleeve off and you have a lovely um, plastic uh, outer box here with Twisby on the lid there, uh, and then the sort of the barcode information and all that. I got the smoke, this comes in two finishes, smoke and sapphire, the sapphire being blue, smoke being a blacky gray. Now it comes with little uh, tabs to holding this box together, I've taken it apart, obviously I've inked and used the pen already, um, and then you get the pen in a nice little foam holder there, as well as some basic, very basic uh, filling instructions. It is a very basic pen, uh, so it needs no more than that, and it's fabulous. And this packaging, the pen doesn't need any more packaging than this. This is uh, the cheapest pen that uh, Twisby have offered and do offer, uh, and there are elements within that that show uh, this, but also I think this is a, a really interesting pen, and a pen that, as I said, or may have said, I can't remember, uh, I think it suits the market it is aimed at very, very well. Okay, parts of the pen. So the barrel is smooth with a couple of like little sort of uh, facets towards uh, the end from the injection molding and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, the cap, clear plastic with a uh, cap liner, has a small, uh, it's a slip cap, uh, not screw cap like a lot of the other Twisby pens. A uh, little loop there which acts as both a roll stop, uh, but also uh, to hold, you know, sort of a, a lanyard or a, be on a keychain if you wanted to or something like that I assume. Uh, it's Branded there with Twisby Go in the clear plastic. It's got the little red plastic logo on the top uh, and it's, yeah, a slip cap. It clicks quite nicely, it is quite secure. Uh, so if you did put it on a lanyard, I don't think there'd be any issue with that falling off. So the section is very tapered uh, and has a slight triangular grip built in, similar to the, uh, the Eco. Uh, and uh, the typical sort of small, I think, number five or four or five uh, nib there uh, for Twisby. Um, I think you can see it's got it's branded with the logo and the name, uh, and I have this in the fine. So what makes this pen interesting is the filling system. Uh, it's not a pen that you can eyedropper or uh, has the typical inbuilt uh, piston. Um, it unscrews the barrel there. The barrel does have a hole in the end there, which does suggest that it is aimed at a kid's market or a student market, uh, perhaps as well. And I think it's a good pen for that because it has a decent ink capacity, uh, it's easy to fill, and it's very affordable, but more about that in a minute. So the way this pen feels, is I won't do it here because it's filled, filled with ink, but you depress this spring, it expels all the air out of the feed and uh, ink chamber. And then as you release the spring, it draws ink up. It is very easy, it is very simple, it is brilliant. There are other pens that use a similar sort of filling system. I think of some of the Montegrappa pens uh, that use a similar system, slightly more expensive, of course. Uh, so it's not necessarily a revolutionary filling system, but it's first on Twisby and the first of this sort of kind in this price range that I'm aware of. Uh, really, that's that's the pen. Uh, it's It writes well. You'll see it in, in action in a minute. Uh, but let's do a couple of uh, size comparisons just very quickly. First thing we'll compare it to is uh, the Twisby Eco. Now, obviously this is this is a smaller pen uh, when, it's, uh, when it's capped, uh, and when they're uncapped, what you get is about sort of half a centimeter, I'd say, of extra length on the Eco. Um, the Go does post better than the, the, the Twisby Eco does post on that O-ring there, um, couldn't get to click just then, but that's okay. Um, the Go does post. That's probably one of the better posting Twisby pens. It does make a fairly long pen, uh, but it's 
lightweight plastic so it's not going to be overweighted it's a decent size in the hand anyway um you'd have to have pretty pretty big hands uh to for this to be uncomfortable and i've got sort of average size hands um, another pen to compare it to, of course, is the Lamy Safari. Now, um, the Lamy Safari is, once again, slightly longer. Um, and if you look at the grip sections of the two pens, you'll be able to see the uh, similarity of size between uh, the two grips there. Um, they're quite similar in a lot of ways and also similar nib size. Um, so that's what you're getting into if you decide this is a pen for you. So let's now quickly talk, uh, before we uh, do the writing sample, let's just talk about the value of this pen. Okay, so this is the cheapest pen that Twisby offers. It is about two thirds the cost of an Eco. Now the Eco is great value. As a piston filler, as a really well, as a really well crafted, well manufactured pen, it's an absolute bargain. So this is much cheaper. And there are signs of that. The plastic is not quite the same quality. Um, I don't mind the feel of the plastic on this uh, grip section. I think it's got a nice sort of um, grip to it anyway. Uh, and But the plastic of the cap and the barrel is not the same quality as the plastic on the Eco, but you're not gonna get that at this price point. Uh, the filling system is obviously, well, I assume cheaper to manufacture, uh, but it does seem to have the same uh, nib and same quality nib. This is a student pen. I think if we're gonna categorize it wholly and solely and simply into one easy category, we would have to say this is a student pen. And, um, see the roll there. Uh, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think it's an interesting filling system for a student pen. Not being able to take uh, cartridges uh, means that it will limit the student use of this pen because you can't ch just whip out a bottle of ink in a lecture or a class and fill up your your pen, it's not as convenient, but it does have a good ink capacity and you'd have to write quite a lot to actually empty this pen. And at this price point, it is, I think, actually a really very good pen. It does, doesn't compare to the things like the Pilot Metropolitan, which uh, is in a similar sort of price range. Uh, that's a, a different level of pen, I think we can all agree. Uh, but this is an interesting offering and something new from Twisby and I quite like it. So here are my thoughts. Now, this isn't my thoughts on the pen necessarily. This is my thoughts on other people's thoughts. When you buy a pen at this price point, when you buy a pen that is designed to be made at a lower price point, you are not going to get the same quality materials and filling system that you will get on the Twisby Eco. You know that when you buy it, don't complain. If the Eco costs $18 and this pen costs $18, I can understand the issue but they are at different price points, they are designed differently, and they're designed with different, uh, different features uh, as, the, uh, as the strengths of the pen. So this is a pen that, you, firstly, this is a pen you can fill with one hand. You, I would say that filling a Twisby Eco with one hand would be quite tricky. I've never tried to do it. It just isn't what, I'm, what I think is the way to fill that pen. You can fill, fill the Go with one hand. These are pens that are, once again, these are well made at this price point. There is nothing wrong uh, with the manufacturing of this pen. There are some injection molding and like uh, little sort of bits that haven't been smoothed out, sure. But you're not paying what you pay for a more expensive pen. So I think, you know, so people complaining about the build quality of this pen or the feel of it, I think you have to understand what you're getting. And when you buy the pen, you, you know that so as I said, don't complain about that if you're comparing it to a more expensive pen from the same brand. You're not going to get this pen at this price. You're going to get this pen at this price. And that's what you get. Okay, so let's see the pen in action. Uh, and as I said, I'm using Robert Oster Toffee, which is a relatively new Robert Oster ink, which is a re really cool sort of caramel brown. Um, comes in the usual, uh, you know, Robert Oster bottles, which is great. Um, First thing I'll do is I'll just sort of uh, show the, the ink in a couple of other uh, forms. So we've got it here on Terminal River paper. It comes up with some very nice shading. Um, it's not a sheening ink necessarily. There's some shine to it, but it's not sheen. Uh, there's no bleed or feather on this paper, as you would expect. It's Terminal River. You're going to get the best quality. Moving down the line, 
we'll come back to Rodeo in the middle of this, but uh, this is on sort of general sort of 80 gram copy paper. Um, there's slight spread and a little bit of bleed occasionally. I said no bleed there, but there are a few uh, dots where it sort of come through. Uh, but it's pretty well behaved on copy paper. You do get a lot of feathering and a lot of bleed on, uh, well, some feathering. There's actually quite a lot, let's be honest, um, on this sort of cheap student note paper. Uh, but you'd get that with almost any ink. It is a relatively wet ink. I do quite like that. Uh, it's got, as I said, nice shading. It's a beautiful, I think that's actually a really beautiful sort of um, caramel brown. Uh, something nice from Robert Oster. Not entirely dissimilar to a couple of other Robert Oster inks. I, I think of things like uh, Cafe Kramer, uh, which is a very similar sort of colour. Let's see it now in action uh, with the Twisby Go. See the pen in action as well. This isn't a pen I will use post it, I don't think. Uh, but let's see how we go. This is a fine. So it's a smooth enough nib. Now, Twisby fine nibs aren't ever as smooth as a Twisby medium, and I prefer the Twisby medium myself, um, but this pen writes smoothly. It's got a good flow. It's always, it seemed to keep up with, uh, with all my writing without any uh, problem. I think this ink looks really nice in this pen where it lays down some nice sort of darker sections and you do get the beautiful shading. It's a smooth enough nib. There's a bit of feedback, but it's I wouldn't say it's scratchy. Um, just that there's feedback. And, uh, you know, it is quite quite a wet pen, I have to say, for a fine. Um, I've certainly used pens that are a lot drier. Uh, as I said, it's a relatively wet ink as well. It's nice. It's a nice pen. It feels actually quite nice in the hand. I like the, the size of it. It's quite sort of, um, it's got a good sort of girth in the hand. Um, and yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a really nice offering from Twisby in a sort of a student market. My only concern in terms of the, uh, concern in terms of the student market is the fact that you, it doesn't take, you know, cartridges or anything. It's got that inbuilt spring, um, plunger. But that's okay. I think it's a really nice pen. I think it's, for the price point, you're getting a decent pen. It writes well. It's It does everything it needs to do. The packaging is excellent, and as is normal with Twisby. Uh, it's not a tinkering Twisby pen. Like, you can't take it apart as, well, you can't take it apart, but it doesn't come with, like, the wrench and the silicon grease and all those sorts of things. It really is a budget pen from this brand. And you do get what you pay for, and you know what you're paying for, and that's fine. Is this a pen I would recommend? Yes and no. I think there are better pens for uh, new users of fountain pens and students. I think this is a pen that uh, would be fine in any collect, you know, Twisby collection. Um, I'll keep it as part of my Twisby family. I think it's an okay pen. I think it writes well. Um, as I said, I like the filling system. I like the fact that it has a good ink capacity and I like the size of the pen. So I'm quite happy with it. This was the Twisby Go and Robert Oster toffee a beautiful sort of light brown caramel colored ink um i hope you found this video useful if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications button to stay up to date with the videos that i produce please feel free to get in touch you can do that either here on any of my videos or at any of the uh platforms listed below in the meantime enjoy your pens enjoy writing and i'll talk to you later